Hello, this is the Trade Site Stocks and Futures Market Preview and Domestic Economic Data Roadmap for the week beginning Monday, May 1st, ending Friday, May 5th, 2017. I hope you had a good week this last week. Here's a look at the ES Front Month Futures Contract. <clears throat> this is the daily chart of the S&P 500 in futures form, which is the proper technical way to look at the market. And it wasn't much of a week. Monday was the big uh, gap up and go day, or Monday and Tuesday basically, but other than that, uh, the week was fairly flat, and we still are basically stuck in the same range that we've been stuck in for a while. Let's go through the major indices, and we'll talk about the economic data coming out this week, get ourselves a plan. So here's crude oil closing at 49.17 for the week. Down, sorry about that, down 15 cents. Gold up $3.40. S&P cash index down 4 and a half. Um, and, and by the way, when you look at the cash index, it takes out more of the gap, so you can see how flat Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday was Monday, and there's two gaps, and you'll see that when we look at the intraday action. It was not a very interesting week from that perspective, even though the, the market gained, obviously. NASDAQ 100, new closing highs at 55.83.50, up 12 points. Sox loses 17. Got the uh, biotechs up 9. That's not near new highs yet. VIX up 46 cents to 10.82. That's still some of the lowest volatility readings that we've seen in forever on the VIX. Horrible. Not good for trading. Trend 1.28. 10 day moving average is at 1.2. NASDAQ volume was 1.8 billion shares to close out the month and also coming off the heels of some big earnings like Amazon and Google. So that's really not huge volume when you realize those stocks were reacting to their earnings. Interestingly, advanced decline ratio on the NASDAQ negative 759, advanced decline ratio on the New York negative 662. Google up 33 points after their earnings. This was an earnings gap. New closing highs by far on Google. Apple down 14 cents. Been here for about a month. Amazon up six, but it was higher to start the session. Came back quite a bit. Netflix down 88 cents, but still near all time highs. Tesla up five and 44, also near highs. TLT, the 20 year bond ETF, gained 27 cents. Goldman Sachs down two dollars and a penny. Still no thirteen. Oh, there's a thirteen buy signal. There's your thirteen buy signal on Friday on the Goldman Sachs after all this. So that'll be interesting to watch. So you can see the thirteen sell signal. We've been short. We shorted Goldman at two forty four to start the year and covered it at two fourteen before options expiration here in April. And uh, and now you've got a thirteen buy signal, but at a higher price. All right, let's take a look at the intro. Week action. This will be, uh, we'll go to 10 minute candles so you can see the whole week. And so here we go. So Monday was a big gap up and then dead flat closed, literally closed a tick off of where we opened the session on Monday. Tuesday was a gap up, pushed a little higher for about an hour, not even that, 40 minutes. That was it. We closed right there. Wednesday was a flat opening, popped up over lunch, but came back closed dead even from where it started the session. Thursday, a small gap up that filled quickly, closed dead even. Friday, a small gap up that filled quickly, drift a little lower, closed dead even. But if you notice, Tuesday through Friday, we're stuck basically in a 16-point range, which is usually average daily range on the ES. Monday was very narrow after the gap. And so most of the week, the gains that you see, because we came into the week, we had closed at 22.47 the prior week, 23.47. Most of the gains for the week are in the two gaps. NASDAQ side, similar, and then gained a little bit because of Google and Amazon on Friday. But really, all, the intraday action was very flat, not your ideal setup for the week uh, in terms of the trading. All right, here's a look. Once again, we'll put the ES up. Let's go through the data that's coming out this week as we start May, new month. Earnings season is behind us. So what do we got on Monday? Um, we've got the uh, personal income and outlays at 8.30 a.m. We've got PMI manufacturing index at 9.45. at the ISM index at 10 a.m. along with construction spending. And then on Tuesday, there's a beginning of a two-day Fed meeting. So the one thing that will slow us down this week will be the Fed. We've got, uh, and that's about it. On Wednesday, MBA mortgage applications, 7 a.m. Eastern time, ADP employment report at 8.15. And then the uh, ISM non-manufacturing index at 10 a.m., PMI services index at 9.45, weekly crude oil numbers at 10.30, and then the Fed announcement at 2 p.m. 
So we'll look for the three-wave phenomenon after that. Thursday, Challenger Job Cuts uh, Job Cut Report at 7:30 a.m. International Trade at 8:30, along with the weekly jobless claims numbers, initial jobless claims, productivity, and costs. We got the uh, factory orders at 10 a.m. That's 30 minutes in. We got the Natty Gas number at 10:30. That's an hour in. That's about it. And then on Friday, uh, consumer credit at three in the afternoon. That's it. So. Uh, the big thing this week is the Fed. That'll slow us down Tuesday going into Wednesday. And I don't think we're expecting a rate hike at this meeting, but we'll see. Of course, it's always the language after that matters. The bulk of earnings are behind us. We don't have to worry about that. Charts, as usual, brought to you by eSignal. If you've not yet taken a trial of our services, feel free to do so. We will help you out for a couple weeks. Have a great trading week.